Hi Pisces, welcome to Higher Source Tarot for your August mid-month tarot check for all Pisces, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. And I just want to start by thanking you all so much for supporting the channel by watching the readings and liking videos and subscribing. It means a lot to me, so thank you for doing that. And if you're new to the channel, I'd love to invite you to join us by becoming a subscriber. I do readings every week, okay, every Friday, and then typically Monday or Tuesday I'll post another reading. And um, later in the month I am going to be posting and doing a seasonal reading which will cover the months of September through December. So a predictive, four-month predictive reading. So let's begin. Let's get the guidance please for Pisces. Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. What does Pisces need to know please? Pisces, Sun, Moon, rising in Venus, please, for the highest good, for the highest good. All right. So we'll do, um, we'll do your tarot reading, and then we'll do an oracle reading where you can ask yes or no in a timeline. All right, and it's always somebody's reading, not always everybody's. So you begin, the current situation is the Three of Swords. The immediate influence is the King of Cups. You're represented, your destiny here is temperance. In the distant past, you have the Ten of Swords and the Five of Pentacles. Coming towards you, you have the Seven of Wands. Interesting, you're represented by justice. The situation or person around you is the Ten of Pentacles. You've got the King of Pentacles as your hopes and fears and the Empress as the outcome. Now, the bottom of the deck, you've got the World and the Queen of Swords, all right? So... Really, it, somebody here, this keeps showing up for you guys. It's like somebody's really been through hell and back, but you are on the upswing. I, I like to see, especially the Three of Swords with the Ten of Swords in the distant past. That means a lot, and we'll talk about it in a minute. Um, you have Air, so Libra, Gemini, Aquarius here. You've got Earth, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. You've got Libra and you have Sagittarius. You do have fire too um, with the seven of wands here. So you definitely were hurt in love. Somebody here was with the three of swords and, um, but there's healing going on around you. You're healing and you're, the three of swords is an interesting card because it's sadness, betrayal. It can certainly be third party. It does not have to be a, you know, uh, somebody's having an affair, it can be another type of third party, some other interference in a relationship. Could be work, could be um, family, could be other people, you know, giving bad advice that's not really their business to give and influencing a situation. But with the Three of Swords, those swords are acceptance, all right? So their acceptance, it's at the point of, you know, past that initial trauma and shock and getting to the point of really accepting, okay, this, this really is, this really did happen. This really was a part of the story, but it's, you know, it's not the whole story, right? It's um, just a part of it. So with the King of Cups, I do like to see this because it's all about self-improvement. It's about deepening your connection to your higher self, to your spiritual self, and to the universe. Um, it's, it's also self-improvement in other ways. So for some of you, if you went through a terrible breakup or even if it was a job loss, I get more love here, but there is the 10 and King of Pentacles. So it's possible and the five of Pentacles, it's possible it was a job loss. You're going to come out better than ever before. All right. You are, for some of you, it's a full transformation. I mean, I'm, I'm not just talking spiritual. It's also physical. So, and I mean, that's pretty common, right? We have an ending, especially if it was a divorce and all of a sudden you're, you know, going to the gym and really following a tight program and it's paying off. I mean, I, I feel like an ending of a relationship that was here, this person is at some point going to come groveling back, but you're not taking them. You're moving on to better things. Um, so for those of you that are pining for reconciliation, I think you're going to have somebody better come in. Um, so, you know, good riddance, quite frankly, they're not worth your time with this kind of heartache. They really aren't because there was definitely a betrayal here. But again, too, if it was work, um, 
you know, you got the rug pulled out from underneath you. It seems very unexpected. And even if some of you know, kind of felt it coming, it was not enough to really know that it was going to happen. It was like this intuitive hit that maybe you talked yourself out of, which a lot of us do. And then it happens and you go, oh, damn it. So you're on the road to recovery big time and it's going to be beautiful. So your destiny here is temperance. And again, it's a Sagittarius energy, but it's such a beautiful card because it's all about healing. It's like going with the flow and just getting in flow with the universe. This card in, um, in the, you know, in the order of the deck, it comes after a crisis. Okay. It comes after the death card, which is transformation. And so part of that transformation is a rebirth. And here's that beautiful rebirth. Um, it's an, you know, there's an angel with these, these pouring this water, right? And it's flowing back and forth. And so it really is a card of, you know, this emotional flow, really, like I said, getting in flow. Um, and it's also about just kind of letting things go and grow, you know, growing by letting the past go and leaving it behind one day at a time. It is really, truly major healing. Um, you know, this can be the card of the alcoholic, and that's a possible third party situation where addiction was the third party. And it's like they loved you as much as they could love anything that wasn't alcohol or drugs. Um, I once made a comment about alcohol and weed, and I had some pothead really go off on me. So apparently they're very protective. It's funny because the people that have, and I've been in recovery, right? For 13 years, I have had continuous sobriety um, from alcohol and any drugs, but I'm, I'm not, I was never into drugs. But it's interesting to me because when alcohol comes in, nobody cares, but when it's weed, it's like <laughs> it created an uprising. But anyway, um, so what I'm telling you though is there there was some other force at play and the universe moved that away from you because it was it would have it was creating such an imbalance and an unrest that it was no longer serving you. So it's kind of like the universe does for us what we can't do for ourselves and brings you though you'll always be brought to healing with this, right? When the 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 pain pushes until the vision pulls and this is pulling you forward it's really a beautiful a beautiful card to have in your destiny position so the the distant past you've got the ten of swords and you know again it's being stabbed in the back it's a new cycle though it's the end of the pain um and that's where i do feel like this is not a really a good reconciliation reading i think that what's done is done the damage was done it was severe um and it really felt like rock bottom when it happened. I mean, it really did feel like the the rug is being pulled out. The world, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm at the point where I'm touching the very end of the world, right? And it's like, when this is all over, my life is over, this damn well better make sense to me. It's that kind of a feeling like, okay. And, and this again is in the distant past. I mean, it feels like a year or more ago. Um, so interestingly enough, because you have the Ten of Swords and you have the Five, which is a change, Five of Pentacles, and it's walking away. Um, again, with work, it, it may have been about walking away from a larger group with a large, you know, leaving a, a, a work situation, but knowing that you haven't lost everything. Um, you've still got supportive friends and colleagues. You've still got things around you. Maybe you're married. And that's your spouse. You've still got your spouse who comes along with you and says, hey, it's going to be okay. We'll make this work. Don't worry about it. Or you already have a life partner. But either way, with a relationship or with work, you, you didn't lose everything. It might have felt like it briefly, but you still have stuff. And the other thing is you still have your own power. Nobody can take that from us. And that's really what life is about, either fear or love. And it's, it's, it's going within connecting with that universal power, with those universal laws, and knowing that things are always working out for us. You know, we don't give up. We just keep going. Now, um, I listened to an interesting, uh, there's a YouTube channel for Carolyn Mace, and she talked fairly recently about God not being an off-planet God. It's not some force out there. It's within us. It's, ta it's going within. And I think any spiritual teacher talks about that need to go within. You don't have the hermit here, although I would have liked to have seen him because that makes a lot of sense. But 
either way, you are moving forward. Seven, this is a seven of wands. Sevens in the tarot are about victory and success. You're finding solutions. You're, you're, you're moving ahead and really nothing is going to stop you from getting to that ascension, from getting to that place with the emperor and the world and this next part of the journey. Um, you know, you rise above and you have many gifts and talents and, and through all this, it's really about asking, what is this developing in me? You know, what is it that I'm being given through this situation? Because pain happens in life, but suffering's optional. And here you are showing just that. So you're, I like it that you are justice. You're represented by justice here because this is knowing the absolute truth and you do know what it is you've been shown some things or you're being shown them that are going to make a lot of sense. And it's also though about the universe taking command and writing things. So if somebody really screwed you over, I guarantee you're going to see some things happen with them that are not particularly wanted um, because that's part of life, you know, and especially when people lie, liars don't heal. And they, when we lie, when somebody lies, they deliberately say something they know is not true and it's going to have consequences for other people. Their body stores that. Their biology knows it and it makes a profound effect on their entire life map. I've been around a long time and have seen it time and time again where somebody really screws somebody and it comes back and here you go. All right. So you let the universe take care of them. You keep going on Pisces because you got good stuff coming in. So the situation around you, if it's a job, there's money, all right? It's, this is the wealth card. If it's a person, it's beautiful. It's, it's like a dream come true. You know, the universe, it's an interesting card because the Ten of Pentacles, it really depicts this beggar who comes in with a gift. He's really like a, like a spiritual guy, guide or an angel in disguise. That's really what the card depicts. And he comes in to bring a gift. And it, you know, you have to understand tarot was created in Egypt originally, but this particular deck, I'm gonna get into a story, sorry, was created in Italy, like I think a hundred and plus years ago. And so this card is connected to a story in the Bible of Abraham and Sarah being brought a baby. And so anyway, so this is the universe bringing you a gift, all right? Long story for, a, but a, a good situation for you. And it's a very harmonious blending of energy. It's like everything you want. But the other piece of this that's important is really having appreciation for it. It's a new cycle beginning. And sometimes we can get swept up in it, in the energy, and not fully appreciate what's happening around us. So the guidance with this is always to appreciate even the littlest of things that seem to come in because that's part of how you get momentum. So then in your hopes and fears, you've got this king of pentacles here. Again, you've got stability with money coming in. So if you've been concerned about that, there's no need to worry. Um, you do have money coming forward. And especially, I like to see this with the empress because she's like, she's very much the, the energy of, the queen of pentacles, all right? So it makes a couple. She's a bit stronger though, the empress as a, a major arcana. But either way, I do feel like if you're if you're meeting a new person, it's gonna be somebody who's, um, you know, very professional. They might even work in finance and some part of finance. But I do feel like they are humble and they attract a lot of people through that grace and humility. They're not egotistical at all. They're not arrogant. They have a lot going for them, but it's like they don't need to broadcast it. They don't need to because they know who they are. They don't need to prove it. You know, it's like walking up to people and, and telling them how smart they are. Have you ever met somebody that does that and it's so embarrassing? They, they're they not like that at all because everybody just, they, they attract. You know, they're major master attractors. But I do want to show you these two next to each other and kind of the similarities in the cards with the yellow background and all the, you know, the floral growth around them. So the Empress is the female creator of the material world. So again, you're definitely pulling in material gains, but she's also the mother of the tarot. There's a really 
loving energy. It just feels like it's wrapping itself around you, Pisces, and it's bringing a lot of comfort. Um, but it's also bringing with it, like I said, new things that are coming in, new opportunities for you. Um, and it's like, I feel like you're getting into this whole new season where you've come out of this dark doom and gloom into such a bright, beautiful awakening. So you have here with these two coming in as clarifiers, you've got the Queen of Swords and, you know, she is kind of a badass. I mean, she's willing to stand in her power and speak the truth and she brings clarity. You have clarity in your decisions and sometimes Pisces, because you wear your heart on your sleeve and you're, you know, you tend to be more of an emotional sign, not in a bad way, but it can make, lend itself to some indecision. You won't suffer from that with this kind of energy because you're going to this beautiful new cycle with the world and it's victory, success, but it's freedom. It is like freedom from bondage. So whatever has happened in the past, it's like leaving old stories behind, old beliefs behind for this beautiful brand new beginning. And with the world too, it can also be a card of traveling and it just feels like this big, this like opening. I think I've mentioned awakening too. Um, it's the soul fully ascended. So it's a, it's a path that brings great peace and harmony and partnership, um, you know, and, and certainly too, for those of you that are looking for a family, it, it could be yours. It's in the cards. All right. So, you know, it's overall a beautiful reading to have. So we'll do an Oracle reading here and you can ask a timeline. You can ask a yes or no. And, but you know, it's an interesting deck because the creator, he doesn't really love the Rider Waite tarot because he thinks it's too scary. <laughs> and, um, like he's even said, he goes, why did they have to make the Ten of Swords like this grim picture of a person with swords stabbing him in the back and blood? Couldn't they just say it's over? So anyway, but I will say he does have yeses and nos in here and his timelines sometimes, um, they there's meaning in them that's more than face value. All right, so be aware of that. So don't freak out if it seems like it's a no or something. Usually it just means part of the plan needs to be looked at further. So the first angel message you got, this is in the, actually has to do with the past, get more information. So if for some reason you feel like you're tied to these past, I mentioned with the three of swords, that's about acceptance. If you feel like you're not there yet, there may be more information that you could get that would bring more clarity. There might be something about this that was misunderstood that is definitely a potential with this card. So be aware of that. If you feel like you've already moved on, then that's awesome. But if you feel like you're a little stuck, there's your guidance. Look for a sign, all right? This is where you are right now. Look for signs around you. Ask for signs. What do I need to see? What is this bringing me? What, show me? Show me how I can develop more. Show me what I can do. But bring me a sign, you know? And and they will be there. Just look for them. Ask and look and they're, they'll be presented. And then if you stay on the current trajectory, the advice here for you is to let go. And it feels like really letting go of the outcome, attachment to a specific outcome, because sometimes what will happen, and I am a longtime student of the law of attraction, 30 years, okay, I started with creative visualization, the book by Shakti Gwain. I even have the meditation app on my phone, so trust me on this. We can pinch things off the energy by being too specific. Sometimes going general is better because the universe will bring in something even better. But when we're so specific, you know, there, there may be something that has a mix or something negative about it that we know is negative, but we want it anyway, or our ego is too attached to it. And so it slows it down. So let go of the outcome, let go and let it grow, let it flow. Let the universe be in command of this. Um, however, it does say your timing is perfect. You've got perfect timing to bring these things in. So, you know, really know that you can have, do, or be anything. We create our own reality. Nobody creates it for us. And the answer is yes. So typically with the yeses, that is about moving forward. Um, so 
Um, it's one of the things where it would be nice to be able to ask questions specifically of you to understand this, but that's what I can give you at face value. So we'll stop or conclude here with the money and the law of attraction. Appreciation and love are identical vibrations. And we talked about that, didn't we, with the 10 of Pentacles? Appreciation and love are identical vibrations. Appreciation is the vibration of alignment with who you are. Appreciation is the absence of everything that feels bad and the presence of everything that feels good. When you focus upon what you want, when you tell the story of how you want your life to be, you will come closer and closer to the vicinity of appreciation. And when you reach it, it will pull you toward all things that you consider to be good in a very powerful way. So this reminds me, we, we were doing the reading and we talked about the pain pushes and the vision pulls. Here it is. You'll be pulled. It, it will be like a focus like you've never had. So believe in it because it's here for you, Pisces. I love you so much and I'll be back again soon.